there, this is Amy Chaplin from PianoPantry.com. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can make your studio calendar in Microsoft Excel so that each year all it requires is altering one cell and the entire calendar updates. I like this calendar format over a format that separates out each month visually because it shows how the weeks all fit in with each other and from the year from top to bottom. I alternate months in white and gray colors as you can see here uh, there's August September October November and December and then I choose three new colors each year to indicate when the studio is closed studio activities and then weeks that I have group classes on the side then I then detail what those specific dates are so I would encourage you as we walk through this video to open up a blank spreadsheet right now and follow along with me Hit the pause button on the video if you need so you can do each step in time right along with me. Let's get started. So go ahead and open up your spreadsheet. I'm just going to open up another sheet here in my spreadsheet so I can refer back to my old one if I need to. Um, so what, what you're seeing here in this spreadsheet is there's a few items that are missing. If I highlight my cursor over this corner here and I right click on the first column which shows letter B, I'm going to click unhide. Now what you can see is I have a hidden column here, um, column A, which I don't feel is necessary to show on the calendar and it just makes it a little more cluttered looking. So I hide that. But we need this column in order to create the dates over here. So I'm just showing you um, what it looks like. So I'm going to re-highlight that again. And then you can see that my rows start with number two. So with my cursor here, I'm going to right click on number two and then click unhide. And that's going to unhide my first row, which is a set of numbers that's going to help us come up with our calculations for the days of the week. So 0 to 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by coming over to letter C1 here. And I'm going to type 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You can use the tab to just move yourself over. Okay, then in this row, A2... I'm going to um, just type the date. So we're starting with 2018 and the first date, I usually like to start the very last week of July, the first week of August crossover. Um, I believe it is July 29th as Sunday. Okay, so there's our date. Then what we're gonna do is to get the next week, you're going to hit equals in cell A3 and you see that it highlights the cell with a green box. Then you're just going to take your mouse and click on A2 and so it's going to say A equals A2 and then you're going to hit the plus symbol on your keyboard and then 7 which is 7 days of the week and then hit enter. Okay so 7 days from 729 of 2018 it will be 85 of 2018. Then what we're going to do is we're simply going to um, highlight our cursor over the bottom right hand corner of this cell and you can see that a black arrow comes up. We're going to just click on that arrow and hold down your cursor and then just pull. And we're going to pull to about 55. I'm estimating. Okay, so that took us to August 4th of the 2019. So there's all of our dates. If you just put your cursor over the line up here and double click that's what will spread it out so that it fits the cells properly okay then in this box here you're going to highlight the box b2 and right click go down to format cells um, and then go to number the number tab click on custom at the bottom and then you're going to scroll down clear to the bottom when you hit the bottom, um, approximately the fourth one up, it's going to be um, a number symbol, dash en, dash uppercase us, and then mmm, and semicolon at. You're going to click OK on that. And then you're going to um, hit equals, and then highlight A2, the one next to it. And what that's going to do is going to say that this cell is the same date as this one, but you're only showing the month format of that date. Now to fill in the rest of them, I'm just simply going to highlight my cursor here in the bottom 
and pull down on that clear till we get to our last one and it fills in the months of the year. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put the day of the month into cell C2. So we have to put a formula in there and we're just going to type it out. You're going to type equals and then the word day and then a left colon and then the number symbol and then a two, which is the cell that we're grabbing there. We want that date plus C one, which is the cell above us. We want to add those number of days to cell a two. So July 29th plus zero days and then the end colon and then hit enter. And that's going to tell us that the day is the 29th because we didn't add any days to the 29th. Now, when we get over here, we need to add one day in order to make it July 30th. So actually all we have to do now is highlight C2 and we're going to highlight the bottom right hand corner and click and drag that cell across. And then it's going to fill in the dates. So you can see that this is the 29th plus day one or what plus one more day. So the 30th plus two more days, the 31st plus three more days. And since it's a date, it then reverts to August the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and the 4th. Left click on the cell number two, the row number two, and then click insert. So it will shift those cells down. Put your cursor in C2. And then you're going to just type in S for Sunday, M for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then left click on the C column, hold your shift button down, and then click on the I column. And we are just going to go and center all of those. And then we're going to make them a little bit smaller. So just if you pull them all at the same time while they're highlighted, it will make them all the same width equally. Okay, so we're going to do that formula one more time. So put your cursor in C4, and we're going to hit equals, and then type the word day and then put your left parentheses and the money symbol and then a four plus C money symbol one right parentheses and then hit enter. Okay. So there we have August 5th, which is Sunday. And so now what we're going to do instead of just pulling across, we're going to pull down and across and we're going to fill out the whole year from here. So we're going to go down and then from there, once those all fill in, leave it highlighted. Don't click anywhere. Take your cursor and just pull across all the way to I. And we filled out through the I column and all the numbers fill in. So now you have all of your dates for the whole year. So we're going to go back and we're going to highlight now all of those dates that we just filled in and we're going to create borders. So click on the borders button. I kind of did that quick, so let's do that again on the arrow. You're going to go clear to the bottom under more borders. And you can do this really however you like with whatever layout. This is the look that I like. Um, you're going to select the style of line, and I like the thin line. And I'm going to go with a little bit darker gray color. Um, and that's going to be the outline of the outside. As you can see, it's going around that box. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put dashed lines that are a little bit lighter gray in the inside boxes and then click OK. And you can see there now that the outside has a darker line and the inside has lighter lines. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to color every other month and fill the theme color in with a light gray. So I'm going to do July in gray and then skip all the August dates and then September dates in gray and then skip October and then November dates in gray. And if you hold it down the shift button or sorry, the control button, ah, let's do that again. Um, highlight some and then hold down control. You can highlight individual ones to select multiple ones at the same time. Skip December. Um, okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is let me just peek at my current calendar to see if I missed anything else. Um, Okay, so like up there, I did the border a little bit different. So for example, you could go here and do a solid border on all of them. 
that outline on the inside and the outside. Doo doo. And well, that's just one cell, so that's why it's doing it like that. And then you could pick a color to fill them in and so forth. Um, okay, so what I've done then generally is that I then hide this row here because you don't really need to know that it's there. And then I hide this row. So you're right clicking on that column or that row and then clicking hide. And you can see that A is missing and then that row one is missing. And again, the following year, then what you do is you unhide those rows when you're ready to you know, create your new calendar, just save your document as the next year's calendar before you make any changes. Cause I like to keep my calendars from year to year, just for reference. Um, so save as change the calendar name, and then you highlight all of these and then click, whoops, you have to highlight the whole thing, but then you have to click like on the row and then unhide so that it'll unhide the row and then click on the column. And then that will unhide the hidden column both. And then for the following year, so say 2019, I'm not sure exactly what the date is, but let's say that Sunday is the 30th, um, or maybe it's the 28th. So let's go with the 28th. I don't know. 7, 28, 2019. And then I hit enter. That changes every single date and boom, your whole calendar for the next year is done. All that you then have to do is go back and just change the highlighted areas. Right, so I'd have to you know change out the a few gray and white days that shifted a little bit because of the dates, and that's all it takes to change your calendar from year to year. Um, no more manual calendar creation. So the last thing I wanted to show you today was how to um, get the format to look more like this final layout. So you just want to go over to view and then click on page layout view and that's going to show you a little bit more of what it's going to look like when you go to print it um, so again i'm going to hide my column here and actually what i'm going to do let's do this again change my date back from when i did it there just a second ago there we go so now we're back to 2018 2019 um, so i'm going to hide this column and i'm going to rehide this row and then go back to my page layout view. And then you could add your header here, like, you know, 2018, 2019 studio calendar. Um, you can make, you know, change the formatting, make it larger text, anything like that. Um, you can change the header space by moving this down here. Um, you can change the view so that you don't see the grid lines there in between. It looks more like what it would look like. Um, on the printout, um, I'm going to just for the sake of ease, I'm just going to copy down my dates from over here. Um, but you would type in all of those dates. And then, and what you might, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um, let me rehide my sheet here so you can see my finished copy. Hide, hide, hide. Okay, there you go. So I actually put a column between the two just to give you a little bit of space. Um, why do I keep doing that? Um, so you can just do that by right clicking and then insert column and then you could just make that column as wide as you wanted. Um, another way you can also actually do it um, is to just put it in the very next column but then create a margin in the column. And we do that by right clicking again and then clicking on format cells. And if you go to alignment, you just indent um, at one and it will, oh, that didn't do it. Okay, let's do this again. Format cells, horizontal, left indent at one. There you go, and it just pushes it over a little bit, so it gives you a little bit of space. Now my margin is kind of small here, so I'm gonna need to go to my page layout margins and I'm just going to go narrow for now and see if that helps. So I still need to scoot it over a little bit. So I'm just going to pull this in. There we go. And then that squeezed it together. Um, let's see. And that just kind of, that's how that layout works. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. So I hope you found this video useful and that it might contribute to a more organized studio and less stress for you each year as you plan your studio calendar. For more organizational tips for independent music teachers, visit pianopantry.com. You can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter at Piano Pantry or on Instagram at amystudio88. 
Happy teaching!